hello everyone and welcome to another game here today we actually have gram on the rio with us is amir amir how are you doing today uh pretty good hopefully gonna be better looking at gram play some rio i love watching him move like all over the map kiting everyone insane like the ability for him to move throughout a fight just makes my brain tingle yeah, no, he's definitely top notch on the Rio. I believe it's it's his like most iconic, uh, almost to the point of like one trick pick, correct? Yeah, GRAM for a lot of people have been has <laughs> I can't even speak has been known as the uh, one of the top Rio guys, uh, at least for NA. Don't think that anyone in KR has even been more influential on Rio to a lot of NA players as GRAM has been. Yeah, big shoes to fill out. Now, in saying that, though, Rio has been a really, like, popular pick this season. And we we actually see, I'm pretty sure there's, like, three Rio mains in the top, like, 20 right now in NA. Specifically, uh, not even just speaking about KR. I'm pretty sure KR also has a few Rios up there. Uh, and I know EU also has some Rios. Rio's been, like, such a big pick for a lot of people. We've had, I think, Griff play as well. Uh... A lot of the changes that happened at the beginning of the season, bringing in some new items, uh, some new augments as well, made Rio a very big pick for people that were looking for a new ADC to pick up. So I think we saw a big burst of people that were learning Rio at the beginning of the season, and they kind of just stuck to her, kept playing, and and now we just have a an influx of Rio players. For better or for worse, I mean the characters just. So, so strong and like her kit is simple enough but she also has enough like diversity in her kit that makes her you, know, you have to think of things like you're using short bow versus long bow using your ultimate appropriately because i think those two uh buttons specifically can really make uh make or break the difference between a, a good rio and a bad rio yeah so rio being able to switch alt forms before she takes a fight Knowing if you need to start the ult or start the fight with a longbow ult or use shortbow ult in the fight is it's such a big thing on what breaks a Rio from being a good player to being a great player. Mm -hmm. And then also knowing like do I need to use my W and longbow or short or shortbow for the slow or the extra damage? Because for a lot of people that don't know, Rio longbow W actually counts as a basic attack. So if you have things such as the radar, then it can actually trigger your radar pick. Yeah, which is actually really incredible like way to proc it. Uh, I know yeah. it can definitely be like a good way to happen if someone's just out of your reach and you do that last little hit to proc and do more damage before they get away. Yeah, another thing is uh, I saw a GRAM doing this just earlier in this game. Uh, we took E shift and we use E shift one at the very beginning to get the extra little dash because it is such a short cooldown that early. And then as we were trying to take a small fight in cemetery, we just E shift after the fight is over to try and grab a bat. I saw that, yeah. And it looks like G Ram's trying to start the fight in longbow form, going going for a slow. I assume to be able to pick off this backline, and he like. GRAM's movement, just dodging every single ability, and still full HP after 2v1-ing. Yeah, that's actually crazy. Like, he literally just played out of Zara's range. Like, Bernice couldn't actually do anything to GRAM. And then, Free Stratos couldn't hit him. GRAM just dodged everything. Yeah, and Stratos is a player that's known for hitting most of his abilities. So, this is... Like, GRAM's just moving all over, and it's too hard to, to touch him. That's, uh, that is actually kind of crazy, but we'll, we'll have to see... Where we go i know one thing about this game specifically that we were kind of interested in is that um g ram does go i believe it's crimson bow instead of fail not this game yeah and i looked a bit more to see what other rio players are doing and at least in kr it doesn't seem like crimson bow is really caught on we're still running a lot of fail not um and still not upgrading it too often i think a decent amount of Korea players enjoy just having the raw stats rather than getting the extra passive on it. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of interested in it too. I think, I mean, I think statistically, Fail Not is just the better bow, period. But I mean, it's a blood weapon. It better be the best <laughs> that you can have, right? But uh, I think I think that's the, the big factor that I think Crimson is just a more econ-oriented um, econ pick. 
Yeah, I mean, it's a 300 credit difference. That's an extra credit, or that's an extra transition right there. Yeah, and I think the extra transition that we're we're taking on this is uh, Omerta, I think, right? We're going a force core instead of a, normally, I believe it's the garment that uh, a lot of ADCs have been picking up with the, the meteor upgrade. Yeah, so I know GRAM was talking about this a bit before where your chest piece slot is usually determined by your headpiece. So your chest piece is usually your final upgrade and you choose your chest piece based off of if you go enough attack speed in your headpiece or if you are going more damage into your headpiece. Um, I don't know the exact uh, reasoning for each item choice, but I know on average when he goes, um, I think it's Star of the Wilds, he'll decide not to uh, not to tech into Omuerta, but I think when he goes Blaster Helm, that's when he does. Yeah, because yeah, he does go Blaster Helm this game. Also, really funny looking, giving up the <laughs> lost his tag skill. Uh, oh. They were able to kill him. Also, Priya going level one blink right now. I, I... Oh, that is. I mean, we were talking about this another time where level one blink on some characters, it can just feel a bit too weak. It's but... too weak. No, there's the level that up. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's not a good think, thing. Uh, I don't know if you've been following too much on what uh, a lot of the Priyas have been doing, but Priyas have been rushing holy orders and then upgrading guitar after that or going holy orders into arm piece and then making whatever transitions you can on the way because Priya's transitioned more from a support or supportive mage that can deal damage to basically just a burst mage yeah she's um, been going I've been down calling that road for, since, since her buffs on all of her scaling and damage she's sort of kind of gone down that road yeah and I mean, at least for me, someone who enjoyed playing support Priya a lot, it's, it's very sad, but I, I've been enjoying playing damage Priya. It's not too bad. It feels like I'm doing a lot in a lot of fights. And then I look at the end of the game and I'm like, oh, I did 20,000 damage. I wonder how much was actually in a fight yeah, versus well, just poking well, people. I don't know. A lot of Priya's damage seems fake. But to talk about G-Ram in that fight, that was crazy. Like, so most times when you think of a real player, you think of longbow right playing safe yeah. longbow range g ram for like i believe 60 to 80 percent of that fight was in shortbow the entire time just doing insane amounts of damage just because he knows that spacing and he knows that he doesn't have to worry about getting uh jumped on uh, especially his teammates played really well around him giving him incredibly good heal like when frankie tried to dive him and yawn just completely slammed him into the wall and let, let g ram have a uh, full rain on it uh, I know GRAM also really likes playing with Priya when he plays the Rio. Um, he was talking about how Priya and basically any ADC, or Priya and Rio in specific, just allows Rio to have so much control over the fight. Because if anyone tries to dive, you get the Priya ult, and then you have Rio shortbow ult. Or if you want to go forward, then you get the Rio longbow ult, and then Priya movement speed buff. The, the combos between these two characters, they just have so much synergy that it doesn't feel fair to not just run this combo every time. Well, I mean that, and I mean also Priya is the best anti-dive character in the entire game. I, you know, changed my mind. That's, it's just a factor. I, yeah. This character is too good at anti-dive. Her ult, the, I think the only character that can rival it is heart ult, but I think heart ult just needs to be removed from the game. So in terms of balanced characters, yeah, Priya is up there. Yeah. Oh, going for the blink ult, catching him. <laughs> uh, we're, 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 it's like the problem is, is we picked we picked a Rio game to talk about Rio, but there's a Priya in the game, and we're both Priya mains, and we're like, oh my yep. god, Priya. We, yeah, I uh, need to, I need to know. Uh, we need to talk about our Priya game plan here. Like, fuck, ah, level up your blink. I'm, I'm gonna lose Wait. it. I'm gonna lose it. Don't take it. Why do you have blink? <laughs> I think the thing I'm more surprised by is we're playing with. Rio and Priya, two very carry-oriented characters right now. And our Yawn has four items. <laughs> it's day three. Man's got a lot of mithril. Um, yeah, actually, he's yeah. back. Yeah, uh, this is a... Uh... Three mithrils and a tree. Surely he does top damage. <laughs> oh, I mean, to be yeah. fair, it does let him go up and engage. Like, technically, Priya and Rio have enough damage, even with them not being scaling as much. So Yawn just being able to be up in the front is probably okay. 
Although he probably didn't need this glove. Huh? <laughs> like, like I, mean, I understand the myth armor. I understand the myth shield, like being on him before before anyone else. You know. Yeah, getting uh getting our frontline items is very good because it opens up a lot of space for the rest of our players to just like sit down, turret, and and not have to care about playing the rest of the game. But also, I thought that this first four score was maybe going to go into the Omerta, but we are getting our radar as a lot of ADCs have been prioring. Gosh, I love radar. Radar is just like the best thing in my in the world for me. Uh, I even run it on like characters like Kasha, and uh, a lot of people are like, "Don't don't do Kasha with radar because you know just play Rio at that point." But radar feels too fun. It's just too good. Radar is a an item that just is enjoyable. Like even if it's good or bad, it's just always going to feel good. Yeah, that's the important part. It feels good. Don't don't go into the math and figure out the number. It it feels <laughs> good. That's what matters. I mean, if you care about your damage output, then maybe, but. I think for the most part, uh, at least what I tell a lot of players is, if an item doesn't feel good to play, then then just don't play it because you're gonna feel a lot worse and you're just you're just not gonna want to play the game out as much. So build whatever you feel is good for you at that time. And there's the there is the crimson bow. Yeah, we're getting the crimson bow alt or, or crimson bow coming out, and then we're getting longbow alt with uh, with a Priya alt right on top and a Yawn alt. Like this team just wasn't getting away. <laughs> yeah, and at that point as well, just just went right in. We literally e shifted forward with short bow and just started wailing onto onto Darko because Darko had nothing left. It was just over. Yeah, I think if you if you see a Rio on your team and you're not willing to lock in something that makes space, then I don't think you care about Rio as much, because if you if Rio is given enough space, she's just allowed to walk all over the fights. And I think GRAM is a player that's really good at this, where instead of needing other players to make space for him, he'll just run around and and make the space himself. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, and, you, and if you do make space for him, he's someone that'll capitalize on it and know exactly like where where to play it and they, it's like i mentioned at the beginning it's really utilizing that longbow versus short bow and it's really incredible to see gram know the timings of where hey i can utilize this double auto damage versus okay maybe i just need to be a little bit more safe right now they still have tools that can just instant kill me um also don't know if you're noticing but if we look over at our priya's credit Oh, no. We're nearing a blood, and we haven't bought another item yet. Okay, surely this is following suit of Season 3 Blood Guitar Priya, right? Blood Priya yeah. for the Blood God. The Blood Rush? It might be worth it here. Because this is actually something that I've been doing on my account as well, where I just... I'll go Holy Orders into Blood, and it seems, uh... <laughs> Uh, do, you, do you remember the, do you remember last season when i preached about this for like, yeah. every other day i was like guys blood Just waited rushing. for blood <laughs> <laughs> and you're all like you're crazy why are you rushing blood on free like just trust me guys you gotta do the damage it feels so good yeah i mean the weapon actually seems like it has so much value especially when you give priya hex that that doesn't feel too fair because oh. priya's poke is near undodgeable for a lot of characters uh, plus, because we don't have a whole lot of Priyas, not a lot of people will really respect the flowers. Yeah, and then you just get a flower, and that's 300 damage to the face. Another flower, 600 damage to the face. Oh, How are you supposed know. to play the game from there? We're eating but I well. do wonder, do we go tax skill 3 2 on Priya anytime soon? Oh my god, she's still talking <laughs> so much! Okay, honestly, at this point, I think she should just be running Totem. I'll be real with you, Totem would have so much more value with the fact that she's playing level 1. Um, and she Totemar is oh. right here. Or maybe maybe we're just so good. Wait a second. The damage coming out from Jira. I didn't think Project Knowledge was going to fall over that fast. Because Rio is technically count. Oh, slightly off. Ooh. But Rio's technically countered by characters such as Mai. Where Mai can just deny damage from auto attacks. She sets the damage to one instead. Oh. Oh, that again, Mai countering it. Yeah, because if you if you look at that fight, where my press is W, and now the damage coming out from GRAM is is irrelevant. But in the few seconds that Mai's W was on cooldown, GRAM just set Mai's health bar to, to zero. 
no exactly and i mean I, again i think the the whole factor is too oh yeah here it's, it's gonna be around too oh i don't know if you noticed but uh our camillo actually w'd right into the wall and didn't make it over i did not notice that yeah he uh kind of just face planted which is a bit unfortunate okay we What's have it? three seconds of timer oh are they just gonna take the fight though well, thank gosh they were able to get around but okay oh my god look at the damage what is going on this is the tank I, I think that the the longbow auto attack just did like 500 to 600 damage and and this is to tank my we're not playing like full amp damage my or anything this is just tank my that is disgusting see the auto attack damage coming at like this character she's just nuking and yeah there's the longbow auto running forward going into short bow knowing that realistically this camillo can't do anything to us gram's control over every fight is just so intense yeah it's uh it's kind of incredible uh, players like gram are are the ones that make me think you know maybe one day i can have good movement and uh, <laughs> then I lock in ADC, and somehow I'm on the floor wondering what happened. <laughs> yeah. I didn't see GRAM do that. I, I was about to say the exact same thing. I watch this, and I'm like, man, I want to play Rio right now. I lock in Rio, and I'm going to go short bow. I'm going to do some damage, and somehow I'm going to get hit by every single CC and instant blow up. And I'm like, well, maybe I shouldn't play Rio. Yeah, and then, you know, I just tell myself it's a one off game. I just, you know, bad team didn't happen. <laughs> Uh, and I play a few more and I'm like, wait, maybe I'm just not playing well. Maybe GRAM is just better. <laughs> yeah, he's just, he's just a build dev. Yeah, and another thing oh slightly... Oh my gosh, please, oh, wait a second. please, level it up! <laughs> what are you gonna buy, you're a freaking guy, oh. Yeah, maybe we get maybe we do upgrade arm piece it is gonna be an upgraded um, arm piece for sure because scotty's really good but like please just your blink matters man <laughs> i mean realistically it's it's just the range difference for blink okay that, that, the that cooldown is, isn't everything. too important um i think at least with priya to me the range difference doesn't matter too much um just because i feel like a lot of the time i'm playing at somewhat of that range that Rio does where I should be blinking before they get on top of me already and I should just be out of the fight for the most part like I'm never really in the fight I'm always playing from the outside and and just being a nuisance to people uh so I, think... I, I don't know I mean I, I see where your argument goes but I just I can't see it I think at the end of the day if you're gonna run blink having that extra uh, distance is the whole reason why you take blink I, I, at this point i i'm fine with her going level one but i think she should just be going like totem it, it's just gonna have more value than than the short distance that blink's gonna give I, i've never been a totem fan totem priya was, was oh wait are we gonna find a pick on the wick oh my god the damage coming out and then the longbow ult as well slowing the two backliners we're just able to separate the fight this was against wick team by the way yeah they we didn't, didn't even take damage yeah we weren't even scared of it it was wick team who cares we'll just take them out and i think they have they've officially crippled every team it's it's over yeah this should just be over unless we do have team four that's still in the game no they have no team four, no team four is cheating oh yeah don't listen to team four they're they're cheaters <laughs> oh team four doesn't want to play anymore so yeah for the last three teams they're they're unable to play against this we've just removed players from each team uh we killed the camillo and then we also got the lennox down Technically, if these two teams are able to third party, we can make it a 4v3, and then we have a chance of beating GRAM, but I think until then, it's very hard for either of these teams to win. Yeah, I mean, if I had to guess, it would be like Team 5 would have the best chance, just for the fact that like, my taunt plus Emma full combo, and like, you know, maybe that kills, and then they just reset the fight, and... But, but I, yeah, I mean, but then you have to hope that that GRAM isn't just dashing out of everything because I feel like the second that GRAM sees Emma walk up, 
we're just moving back and poking because I think that I, I want to say Rio's auto attack range on longbow is a bit bigger than Emma's E range. It is. It is actually longer. Technically, if G-Ram plays it perfectly, Emma actually can't like catch it. Yeah, and I think G-Ram, honestly, like I can see it happening where we're just playing like we're playing our range so perfectly that no one's gonna catch us. I'm wondering if these two teams do end up fighting at the same time, though. <laughs> I wish. If they stayed, yeah. they could have, but I mean, let's be real here. They just want to take the second place and call it. Yeah, we saw Sylvia running up. I thought that they might go for it, but... Yeah, do you remember, e like, just E-shift forward, go for the free auto attack while Mai isn't expecting it? Uh, like, yeah, this see, auto this, attack yeah, right damage. Here. See, she, she tried, just couldn't even get anywhere near it. Yeah. It's like, this is... This is what you want your ADC to be looking like. If your ADC is ready to just E shift forward and then walk back and completely outrange everyone on the enemy team while also just dealing damage, it's. That, that's what you want. Oh, absolutely. And I, like, actually, I think the other thing that's really um, interesting is that you'll notice a lot of these uh, like higher end um, ADC players use E shift forward more so than anything. Like, Obviously, they have times when they'll e-shift backwards or they'll e-shift to the side or like diagonally, but a lot of them will use it aggressively to get that initial engage or help to follow up something that's already started a fight. Well, I think one of the big reasons is e-shift is technically a slightly worse blink. The only thing it gives you is the attack range on top. So if you're not abusing this attack range, then realistically, you should just be taking blink and it means that using e-shift aggressively will, on average, net you more value than using it defensively. No, 100%. I, I agree. But also, we saw G-Ram took, I think, the first skill shot of the game, being a Sylvia fight or a Sylvia tire just out of nowhere. And yeah, we're just two auto attacks and, and we're removing HP bars. Yeah, plus also uh, the patience and distance there. Like, did you notice how GRAM was just perfectly fine, not even like fishing there? He was like, yeah, I'll just wait. Jan made a made space, started a fight, had everyone focused, and then he just waltzed up and cleaned everything like it was nothing. Yeah, I think one of the biggest things about GRAM is the patience to to wait for your team to do something and then follow up on that, making sure that you're never the real priority target. And if you ever do become the target, then you have the hands and the movement to just say, you're not going to hit me. <laughs> you have the, yeah, yeah you just don't even have this 1v1 man bring your friends yeah <laughs> i mean even in the 2v1 we saw at the beginning of the game and neither of them could hit him oh yeah no 100 percent. but yeah no incredible gameplay really they're just util showing exactly why uh like rio's a, a force to be reckoned with i think rio is always going to be one of the best adcs as long as her damage numbers aren't too low and just because She's a character that enables players with really good movement to do everything they want. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree. All right, everyone. And that's that for this today's video. We'll see you in the next one.